Hello everybody and welcome to Well Fever. On today's show we're going to do a product review on this little guy right here. It's a wonderful product. I think you're going to enjoy it. Stick with me. Here we go. What we have today, ladies and gentlemen, is a magnetic drill from BDS Machining. It is uh, designed and built and manufactured in Germany. Uh, the model is the MAB485SB, SB for swivel base. It features a 10.5 amp uh, heavy duty motor, 17 and a quarter inches high, uh, just under 29 pounds in weight. Designed for continuous use, so it's definitely heavy duty. It has a high speed and it's variable speed, and it has uh, two gear settings uh, one that delivers from 50 to 250 RPM, and the other from 100 to 450 RPM. Probably the greatest benefit of this machine is that it uses annular cutters up to 2 inches in diameter to make perfect cuts. The machine has a capacity of up to 7 eighths of an inch diameter for regular standard twist drill bits. Uh, it also enables you to do some tapping, tapping some threads from 3 sixteenths of an inch to 15 sixteenths of an inch diameter. It has an integrated cutting oil reservoir, an automatic internal lubrication system, a swivel base that allows it to travel 5 eighths of an inch in and out, as well as 20 degrees left and right. Finally, this uh, machine has a quick change keyless cutter system, which is very convenient, a green and red magnetic force indicator, which lets you know uh, if there's enough magnetism or not to complete the cut. And it has an internal cable routing system, which means there's no cables hanging out of the machine. It's also ergonomic and uh, features one-hand operation because uh, all of the controls are conveniently located in one spot. And last but not least, it has an emergency off function. Before I get much further, I want to let you know that this was provided to us by CS Unitech, which is a company in Connecticut. Uh, the president uh, is a Mr. Uh, Thomas Carroll, who I spoke with, and he is the gentleman primarily responsible for supplying us with this. This is the American distributor of BDS machining. Okay, so let's take a look at what comes actually with the machine here. Here we have a standard uh, key type drill chuck. Okay, very standard. This is what you get in any kind of a drill or drill press. If you would like to use this machine to use standard uh, actual drill bits, you can do so. You would just need to take off the keyless quick change drill chuck and put this one in its place. It also comes obviously uh, with the chuck key here, and here it is. And you would definitely need that in order to be able to change bits out. Uh, then what we have are a couple of ejector pins, and those are these here. Uh, these ejector pins, they work with the special cutter heads. It's actually going to eject any blanks that are inside uh, the cutter heads themselves because the cutter heads are actually hollow inside. I'll show you those in just a little bit. Uh, then what we have here is we have a bunch of adapters for threaded taps. And they were definitely not chintzy here. They were very generous. These are very well machined, very sturdy, heavy pieces of uh, steel. I would imagine they're tool steel. Very heavy, very sturdy, and very well machined pieces. So all that's included as well. Uh, also we have here uh, another type of ejector pin that comes standard with it. And we have a couple of Allen wrenches for adjustments to the machine. Uh, we have a chain and a uh, hook here. And this is so that we can chain this machine down in the event we're going to put it in, uh, you know, vertical or perhaps even overhead positions that way we can secure it and make sure it doesn't fall down on anybody and hurt anybody and last but not least uh, we have a, uh, a tapered mandrel that's included with this as well let's start off with the basic features of the machine here let's start with the control panel first of all we have the on off switch which is here over here on this side we have the magnetic base switch this big chunk here this block is actually the magnet so when you activate this switch, that turns this magnet on, which affixes it to any ferrous material that it's connected to. Obviously, it has to be ferrous in order for it to uh, be magnetized properly. Uh, finally, we're going to come over here to the uh, direction of rotation switch, which is this here. The nice thing about this particular mag drill is that you can have it rotate in both directions. 
That is a feature that I'm not sure if other mag drills have that feature, but this particular one does, especially since it enables you to be able to uh, do some tapping. So uh, a great feature, let me tell you. Uh, over here, we're going to take a look at this. This is the keyless quick change drill chuck. It's pretty big and beefy. Uh, they say it's just a quick twist and it's in and out, so we're going to test that in a little bit and see how that works out. Okay, I've gone ahead and switched on the magnet, and you can tell here the green light is on. I plugged it in and switched it on. The green light is on, and that green light indicates that there is enough magnetic force in play. If the light were red, that would mean that it's not uh, it's not getting enough magnetic attraction and you would have to kind of relocate it. So I think that's a great safety feature. So I'd like to take a quick minute to show you what this looks like. If you see here, I go ahead and adjust this lever downwards to the very bottom position, which is almost close to bottoming out here. And if I raise this guy up, and by the way, it's a very sturdy lever. It's really nice. There's no shake or play or wobble in it. This is solid as a rock, this thing. And since it's on the magnetic base, you can see how I'm pushing and pulling it, and it's not going anywhere. This thing is solid as a rock on here, which is great. So this is the distance here. Uh, looks to be about five or six, about six inches, I'd say. Uh, it's a great, great amount of capacity. So anyway, let's go ahead and put it through its paces, I guess. That's the only next thing to do. Let me start off by demonstrating how incredibly easy it is to put a new cutter in here and change one out uh, thanks to the keyless quick change chuck here. So let me zoom in. Now I know a lot of times I've gotten a lot of keyless type things and yeah sometimes they work okay and sometimes they're a little bit of a pain. I'm kind of shocked at how easy this is. You pull up, stick the cutter in, let it down. Guys that's it. It's as simple as that and it's in. Take it out pull up, pull down on it, and it's out. I mean, it is as simple as simple can get. Finally, somebody made one of these that is easy. No twisting and turning, no, no pulling up and twisting, no crazy stuff like that. It's just very, very straightforward, and it works very well. Really nice. Great, great start right off the bat. Okay, so something we haven't discussed yet is up here on the other side of the machine. This is a gear selector switch, and you see there's a one and a two. One is a low uh, gear uh, setting, and two is a high gear setting. And in looking at the directions for this guy, it looks like the uh, low speed is uh, 250 uh, RPMs on stage one, and then the load speed on stage two is 450 RPMs. And in addition to that, uh, let me turn this machine around real quick and show you that over here, there's actually a speed adjustment fine tuning as well. Anyway, let me turn the machine back around and draw your attention to the fact that this is the reservoir for the uh, lubricating fluid. And you can see here's the little uh, valve that opens and closes. And that lubricating fluid goes this way and right into this keyless chuck which then comes right down the middle and out of the annular cutter. What a perfect system. I mean, this is really great. Uh, the people over at uh, CS Unitech sent me this really nice uh, <laughs> cutting oil here. Uh, let me tell you, it's clear. It's crystal clear cutting oil, very clean. It wipes up very easy. It's like the nicest, cleanest uh, stuff I've ever used. Usually the cutting oil is really some nasty, bad stuff. It's dark typical petroleum product like any other oil. It gets everywhere, it's hard to clean. Well, I made the uh, goofy mistake, like I always do on these type of things, of overfilling this, and so of course it spouted out everywhere. And cleanup was a breeze, it wasn't difficult at all. So that is actually a plus for this particular cutting fluid because there's nothing worse than getting this stuff all over everything and then having to spend so much time just trying to clean it off. This stuff just cleans, wipes off really easily. Very clean, crystal clean. You can see in the line, this line is is clear. You can see right through it. That's what this stuff is. It's clean, clear cutting oil. So we'll see how it works. Okay, without any further, I'm gonna go for it. This guy, is uh, the magnet is on, as you can see here from the green light indicator. 
and we're ready to go. I've got it on low gear and I'm putting it on the lowest speed just to try it out. We're going to drill through some half inch plates, so let's see how she goes. Here we go. Okay, so as I begin this cut, you'll notice that I start off kind of easy. Uh, I ease into it gently without putting too much pressure on there. Uh, I have had some experience with cutters similar to this in the past, and I know that if you if you bear down on them too hard at first, it tends to cause the uh, whole system to shimmy. So I kind of took it easy and then started to apply a little bit firmer pressure. Not bearing down on it too crazily, but firmer pressure in order to ensure the cut goes through smoothly. Uh, generally speaking, you want to add pressure on a cutter like this because if you uh, allow it to be too light, uh, you'll just build heat and probably uh, dull the the cutter uh, due to the fact that the heat will uh, cause it to lose its temper. So anyhow, thus far it's re uh, it's uh, operating remarkably well. It's cutting through and through. This is a 13 16 diameter cutter, and if you were to try to drill a standard 13 16 hole, I can assure you it wouldn't go anywhere as fast as this. This is in real time, and this is happening, like, right away. So, thus far, very impressed. Okay, there it is. As you can see here, this hole is very cleanly cut. I don't see any burrs or any problems or anything on this thing. I mean, it was exceptional. The only thing I will say is I think maybe my speed was a little bit too slow on this. So I'm going to try again on a, one more time, only I'm going to speed it up this time. So I've installed the armor plated annular cutter this time, and I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot and see how this one goes. I've also increased the speed. I stayed on the bottom gear, but I've increased the speed a little bit on the manual. So let's see how it goes. After having removed uh, all the shavings, I think you'll see how wonderful this hole is. I mean, this is a phenomenal hole. It's perfect. It went in much easier than the other one. I'm going to move the lighting a little bit so you can see it. Went in much easier than the other one. Uh, it cut quicker. I think the speed increase was definitely the way to go. So I'm going to try it yet again, only this time I'm going to increase the speed even more so. Uh, I think that we can go to the upper limits here without any problems. And so far this guy is just cutting so beautifully. If I were to use a regular drill bit for this, this would take me forever to get a hole this size. I'm sure those of you who have had to do it know what I'm talking about, but this is incredibly easy. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to go to the upper limits of gear one. Uh, I'm putting the adjustable speed all the way to the top. Let's see how this one comes out. Here we go. Clearly, I believe that was the way to go. That came out great. So now I've decided to do something fun and I put this chamfering bit on it. I'm going to reduce the speed a little bit here since this bit is so big. Uh, and I'm just going to put a little chamfer on this hole just to see how it looks. Okay, here we go. Okay, maybe a little hard to see this, but you can see uh, there's a nice chamfer. Maybe if I guard the light here. Yeah, that's better. Try to get the reflection. There's a nice chamfer that I put on this one now, and that was just great. That works out wonderfully. It looks fantastic, too. So that's a great, great feature. Love it. Guys, I'm going to leave it there for now. There are still a number of features that I have not gotten to as of yet. But I'm going to leave that for a part two to this video because I think that uh, 
we need to definitely give uh, more time to this for sure so far so good it's doing really well if you guys have any questions about this make sure to visit uh, the folks over at CS Unitech www.csunitech unitech.com and they'll be happy to answer any questions and help you out with this uh, wonderful machine help you order one if you want and lo and behold they are going to give you a discount just use the code that's up on your screen right now and they will provide you with a 5% discount if you're interested in purchasing this machine uh, just for being a, a fan and seeing this here on Weld Fever. So a big thank you to them if you are interested. If you enjoyed this video or any other of my videos, please make sure to take the time to hit the thumbs up button. You may not think so, but that actually helps the channel out quite a bit. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. That way you'll be notified every time a brand new video comes up. We're trying to put out as many as possible here. I know it's uh, been a little bit short lately, but uh, it's tough to do this and make a living too. So please bear with me, but I'm trying to get more out there to you. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.